Get ready for the Splash Live, Greater West Bloomfield's dedicated update show. Events, businesses, and people. Anything and anyone causing a ripple in the community. And now, let's dive in to the Splash Live. Hello and welcome back to the Splash Live, Greater West Bloomfield's live daily news and talk show. It's your stories from your hometown on your community media five days a week. I'm Tyler Keefe alongside Diane Chabon and thank you for joining us as you do all throughout your work week on Comcast Channel 15 and on AT&T Channel 99. In addition, you can always find us on our website live and high definition on civiccentertv.com, on our Facebook page at Civic Center TV 15 and on YouTube at Civic Center TV. In addition, we're always broadcasting live on the radio as well on 89.3 Lakes FM. That's where you'll find the Splash Live every single day and a 24 hour a day, seven day a week live simulcast of our Civic Center TV programming, always on the radio for you in the greater West Bloomfield area on 89.3 Lakes FM. Diane, uh, a rainy start to Friday after a rainy end to Thursday. It's gonna continue all throughout this final day of the work week and then turn into snow as we commute home and get ready for our weekend. That is true, Tyler. So we start off with a very early morning showers for today, which is going to transition to a mix of rain and snow in, during the mid-morning and will eventually last throughout the afternoon before a very cloudy evening for tonight. Highs are 40 degrees and lows are 36 degrees. For tomorrow, we're expecting cloudy skies with highs of 40 degrees and lows of 35 degrees. On Sunday, similar condition to today, highs of 41 degrees degrees and 32 degrees starting off with a light rain in the late morning which is going to transition to a mix of rain and snow and eventually snow throughout uh, the evening time and overnight yeah and that's going to continue on in, into uh, into the through the weekend Saturday night and even Sunday uh, heading into Monday there's going to be a little bit of precipitation so it's going to be uh, a little bit slicker of a weekend than you'd m maybe be, uh, be hoping for at this time, but just uh, be a little more careful, especially on the drive home today. It's going to be rainy all throughout that day. It's going to vary in the intensity, and it could turn to snow later on. And depending on the temperatures throughout the day, that snow could uh, could uh, persist uh, for throughout the afternoon and, and definitely affect your evening commute throughout the Greater West Bloomfield community. Other things making headlines on this Friday in Greater West Bloomfield, the Greater West Bloomfield Community Coalition recognized recently by local coalitions. We'll tell you what they were recognized for and more about the coalition in just a little bit. West Bloomfield High School choir students had a chance to see one of their fellow West Bloomfield alums downtown in Detroit earlier on this week. We'll tell you where they saw them and, and who that alum was in just a little while. It's time to mark your calendars this one week from today, a very special event happening at the Lodge Grill and, and Bar in Keagle Harbor. We'll tell you about that event and who it benefits also in the local community on today's program. This evening, Keagle Harbor Parks and Recreation will transition Rose Sorter Park into a winter wonderland. How you can participate in that and have some fun getting into the holiday spirit and some Friday night fun with the family as well. Spirit of Grace Church is creating a new spin on a holiday tradition. We'll tell you what that tradition is and how they're modifying it this season to help uh, inspire some giving in our community. In a little while, we'll also be joined by Shane Bronstein, the CEO of JARC, a nonprofit serving uh, people with developmental disabilities in the metro Detroit area. She'll tell us all about their services and uh, how they serve our communities here in the greater West Bloomfield area and beyond. Holiday lighting season is underway throughout our four communities. That means in Sylvan Lake, it's time to get ready for their holiday lighting competition. We'll tell you when that judging is going to happen, the categories, and how you can participate both as someone lighting your homes and potentially as a judge for that competition. Plus, the Oakland County, plus Oakland County is looking to recognize more of its impactful business and professional uh, individuals this season as they get ready for their 2024 40 under 40. The submissions are open as we speak. We'll tell you more about that later on in the program. Plenty more of your stories from your hometown on your community media all throughout this program. Stay with us. The Splash Live continues after this short break. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. 
Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Follow us on Twitter at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. When you have a gambling problem, you have a money problem. Don't let your gambling cause you financial hardship. If you or someone you love is struggling with gambling, we can help. Get free confidential counseling and win your life back. Learn more at michigan.gov slash problem gambling. Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Chabon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too, and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Ronnie started doing prescription pills at the age of 15, and by 19, he died. If your child is struggling with drug use, try not to be too proud to reach out for help. Don't be worried about what the neighbor will think or your family. Just get your child the help they need. Sometimes it's the hard road to take, but um, the hard road is nothing compared to living with the fact that your child is no longer with you. There's hope and help at drugfree.org. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! to the splash live welcome back to the splash live greater west bloomfield's live daily news on talk show your your daily news on your hometown media civic center tv and 89.3 lakes fm so we're so excited to announce that the greater west bloomfield's community coalition was recognized and awarded uh the 2023 coalition of the year by the oakland uh, sorry, by the Alliance of Coalitions for Health Communities in Oakland 
County. They were voted by the coalition leadership from groups across Oakland County and southeastern Michigan. Um, of course, the Greater West Bloomfield Coalition, it's pro it provides a lot of approaches and initiatives on prevention, drug prevention and substance abuse prevention, from working with families to educational programs and a lot more. You can learn a lot more on uh, about their initiatives and what they do and their mission and if you want to also get involved, you can check them out on the Greater West Bloomfield, uh, uh, at Greater West Bloomfield Community Coalition on f their Facebook page or check out their website, jwbcoalition.org. Tyler, a lot of great initiatives that the Greater West Bloomfield uh, Coalition does and, they, and we are very glad and we congratulate them for being recognized. It's of course no surprise to us. Yeah, they provide a number of services in our community. Lisa Berkey, their executive director, is hard at work all throughout the year to provide these programs uh, in education and prevention and, and even intervention for drugs, alcohol, and other issues that affect our kids in our community. They provide parental and uh, student education programs, prevention activities, and build local partnerships too, which is really important uh, in this battle against uh, drug and alcohol uh, use and uh, misuse and, and abuse among kids in our communities. And uh, what was great about this award, and, and uh, as, you, as you pointed out, uh, during the program just a, just a moment ago, and as uh, Deb Macon from our Cable Commission pointed out on their meeting last night, uh, that, that uh, this was voted on by those that are on the, f the front lines in these efforts across communities in our local area who are doing this daily know, and know the work that goes into being an effective community coalition and running that coalition. So congratulations to Lisa Berkey and the entire team at the Greater West Bloomfield Community Coalition on receiving uh, this award, the 2023 Coalition of the Year Award from the Alliance of Coalitions for Healthy Communities. Across town at the West Bloomfield High School, choir students made their way down to downtown Detroit to see one of their own perform on the big stage. The choir, led by uh, director Cheryl Houck, uh, ventured down to the Detroit Opera House to see this woman on your screen on CivicCenterTV.com. Lauren Nicole Chapman is an alum of West Bloomfield High School who is now performing on the stage in downtown Detroit in Frozen, the hit Broadway musical adaptation of the beloved uh, of the beloved film uh, now on uh, on the stage in downtown Detroit. She graduated from West Bloomfield High School afterward attended Emory College, so Emerson College in Boston, graduating in 2013, then moved to New York to pursue a career in show business and achieve her dreams. And that is what she is doing actively right now. She's been in a number of other Broadway productions and, and uh, productions on screen as well and uh, back in Detroit for the time being for this performance of Frozen. So she got an opportunity to meet some of the students currently in the choir program, something she participated in during her time at WB. And of course they got to see her perform on the big stage at the Detroit Opera House. According to an article about uh, Lauren Nicole Chapman recently in, uh, in the, the Oakland Press, Chapman made many trips to Detroit to see shows growing up and as she was uh, beginning to, to have an interest in acting and in theater performance performance, including performances at the Detroit Opera House that she saw as a kid. So this is a full circle moment for her, not only getting to reconnect with her uh, alma mater at West Bloomfield High School and those students today who are inspired to go into the arts, but also uh, getting to continue to achieve her dream and do so in her hometown. You can see Lauren perform at the Detroit Opera House in Frozen now through December 17th for ticketing information. Either visit broadwayindetroit.com or call 313-961-3500. Again, 313-961-3500 or broadwayindetroit.com to see Lauren Nicole Chapman, a West Bloomfield High School alum in Frozen, the hit Broadway musical at the Detroit Opera House. Now through December 17th, Diana, great opportunity for students to see what their continued efforts in pursuing the arts can turn into down the line if you continue to build on those principles that they've learned from uh, Mrs. Houck and others at West Bloomfield High School. Tyler, what an inspirational story to see Lauren who once dreamed of being on the stage. She is truly on right now to be one of the audience and now as a performer is truly inspiration not only to her but also to the students who are, as you mentioned, in the arts uh, in our Greater West Bloomfield uh, School District. So it's a great inspirational story and congratula congratulations to Lauren. And we look forward to see all these uh, art students also uh, go on that same path. So we are very 
very, very happy for her and um, very happy that she is a true inspiration and a role model to all our students right here in the arts in the Greater West Bloomfield District School. Yeah, West Bloomfield High School has been uh, a, a great breeding ground for artists throughout the country, especially uh, in performing arts and acting in particular. Laura Nicole Chapman on Broadway, uh, famously Justin Bartha from the... Uh, from uh, from uh, Hollywood films such as the uh, oh I'm blanking on it, it was Nicholas Cage film uh, Calvin probably knows uh, still in the Declaration of Independence why I'm bl why I'm blanking on the name of that film I don't know but he was also yeah National Treasure thank you Calvin thank you it was that that obvious right on the tip of my tongue National Treasure film they also stole the name of the film right out of out of my head in that moment too. So uh, I guess Nicolas Cage and Justin Bartha invading my brain in that moment. But yes, the National Treasure films, he also had co-starred co in there. And he's also a West Bloomfield High School alum having uh, grown up for part of his childhood in West Bloomfield Township. So a great place for, for actors and uh, getting to see that again and interact in this case with Lauren Nicole Chapman as she's back in the Metro Detroit area performing all the way through the end of December. Congratulations to her and of course, uh, a big opportunity again for the West Bloomfield High School Choir to experience arts at the next level uh, right here in our local community. There's also a chance for you to meet some other local celebrities coming up next week, one week from tonight at the Lodge Grill and Bar in Kegel Harbor. It is the Killer Cares annual event uh, happening from 4 p.m. onward. Killer's Christmas at the Lodge Grill and Bar features a number of different activities. Of course, there are celebrity bar and bartenders, live auctions, silent auctions, 50-50 uh, drawings, great prizes, and a chance to mingle with many of Detroit's top media celebrities, including Dan Miller, Lions play-by-play -play announcer and sports director at Fox 2 News, Woody Woodruff from Kegel Harbor, Ronnie Dahl will probably be there also, a former member of our team at Civic Center TV, plus other local celebrities like uh, Wojo from 97 won the ticket, uh, Hugh Perkins, uh, former Fox 2 News anchor, and so many others listed on their event on KillerCares.org. And they're supporting a number of different organizations through this effort. It's not just a fun night to bring in the holiday season in Kegel Harbor. It's supporting multiple organizations, including uh, Team Joseph, which uh, is an organization that helps to battle a uh, certain type of muscular dystrophy. Our Children's Fund, which supports students right here in the West Bloomfield School District, providing school necessities and other financial supports to those students and their families. Defeat the Label, which is a, a bullying awareness and anti-bullying advocacy organization. And the Downtown Boxing Gym, which provides youth boxing and supports uh, educational enrichment for kids in the city of Detroit. KillerCares.org is the website to learn more information about the Tom Kowalski Foundation, which is what this event is all built around. Tom, Tom Kowalski, a longtime member of the, De the Detroit sports media community, uh, his nickname was, was Killer, and in this case, uh, they've been commemorating his life for a number of years at the Lodge in Kegel Harbor. They'll do that again next week, Friday, and Diane, as we said, a great opportunity to have a lot of fun with people in our local community. If they're out in our local area, rub elbows with some uh, with some local celebrities, but also support a number of good causes uh, supporting our community at a number of different levels and a number of different disciplines. Of course, Tyler, it's going to be amazing. I mean, there's celebrity bartenders, as you mentioned. There's going to be a lot of fun events, and there's also going to be prizes for the people attending. So you're not only helping out and giving out and enjoying yourself, but you also can get a prize and enjoy the music and ambience and also mingle with community members for a good cause. So such a great event uh, by the Tom Kowalski Foundation that they have been doing annually for several years. Uh, a great way to, as, as I mentioned earlier, a great way to enjoy yourself with your or your family members and uh, with your community members and for a good cause. Yeah, learn more information again on KillerCares.org. You can visit their Facebook page at Killer Cares or send them an email for more information on this event and other ways you can support the Tom Kowalski Foundation, killercares at gmail.com. We'll take a break on the Splash Live on the other side, how other organizations in our community are getting into the holiday season, how you can help bring in the holiday season at Rose Sorter Park in Kegel Harbor coming up, plus a new take on a holiday tradition at Spirit of Grace Church. More of your stories from your hometown on your community media coming up next. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. Find local municipal meetings at our program schedule on civiccentertv.com. Find when your meetings air live or when they're replaying on our Civic Center TV live stream. Find it all at civiccentertv.com and click schedule at the top of the screen.
One in four Michigan homes has high levels of radon, a naturally occurring radioactive gas known to cause lung cancer. It doesn't matter where you live or what type of home you have. You won't even know it's there unless you test. So don't wait. Testing is cheap and easy. And if there's a problem, it's simple to fix. Visit michigan.gov slash radon to learn more. We took action. Will you? Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Chavon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too, and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to the splash, live. Welcome back to the splash live, your daily news, uh, your daily news on your hometown, uh, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Kigo Harbor Parks and Recreation are transforming the Rose Sorter Park into a winter wonderland. And you can join them on this beautiful holiday event on Friday, December 1st at 6 p.m. So it's happening today at 6 p.m. There's going to be hanging lights and a lot of decorations. Um, so many holiday-themed uh, music. Um, and uh, a lot of fun. There's going to be, of course, uh, the, the events for kids. The W, the West Bloomfield Library will be crafting with kids. Tom Hortons is going to be providing free hot chocolate, and there is going to be food donations. So bring non-perishable items with you to donate uh, in this wonderful event today. at happening at 6 p.m. at the Kigo Harbors Rose Sorter Park. Tyler, it's a great event uh, to enjoy with your family member, and also also a great event to give out this holiday season. Yeah, it's ran entirely by volunteers out of the city of Kiko Harbor that run their parks and recreation. They do fun events like this all throughout the year. We had Kirsten Sonneville Douglas on our program yesterday. That interview up on demand on our website on civiccentertv.com. You can take a look at that to learn even more information about the Winter Wonderland Park, how you can participate in that tonight, and other ways to get involved in parks and recreation in the city of Kego Harbor going forward. Rosewater Park, of course, is the park just behind their city hall on Beachmont Street in Kego Harbor, right, uh, right behind Roosevelt. They have their city hall right across the street in the back of Roosevelt School. And then behind that, there's a pond, a gazebo, and a little pocket park called Rose Sorter Park. And that's where this will happen tonight. Of course, the lighting's going to happen right away at 6 o'clock. That's what Kirsten told us yesterday. But all those fun activities will continue in the park afterward. And in addition to all of that, if you're not able to attend tonight, you can continue to participate in the holiday festivities at Rose Sorter Park. They are going to continue to have a food donation drop-off be located uh, in, a, in a small bin in the gazebo at Rose Sorter Park. They'll be picking the, that, that up each and every day, uh, those donated items and they encourage you to leave non-perishable food items, uh, typically those canned foods or foods that aren't going to go bad quickly, especially as they're exposed to the elements outdoors. In that bin under the, the gazebo, there is a small top on top of it so that animals won't get into there, but they will clear that out each and every day, and that's going to uh, benefit uh, Open Door Outreach Center out of Waterford, just next door to us here in the city of Kego Harbor. And so more information you can find on the Winter Wonderland Park and keep involved with Kego Harbor Parks and Recreation by visiting their Facebook page at KH Parks or by, uh, or by uh, finding them on kegoharbor.org and learn more information. They're always looking for new members to join their commission uh, and to volunteer to run these events. Leslie Clark having spearheaded this event for Friday night. And of course, again, I encourage you to learn even more information on this. We got a, a full length interview with Kirsten Sonneville Douglas from Kegel Harbor Parks and Recreation on our website on civiccentertv.com as we speak. So after today's show, go ahead and uh, take a look at that on civiccentertv.com. And of course, we'll see you in Kegel Harbor tonight at six o'clock. Maybe bring a jacket. It's gonna be a little bit rainy and a little bit snowy, but perfect thing to get you into the holiday season with some snowfall in Kegel Harbor. 
uh, just down the street from that from uh, from Rose Sorter Park at Spirit of Grace Church in West Bloomfield. A new twist on a holiday tradition. You've probably heard of Advent calendars in the past. You have a calendar that's maybe got some special treats or ideas for gifts every single day of the month of December leading up to the Christmas holiday on December 25th. But Spirit of Grace Church in West Bloomfield planning to do something a little bit different with that tra with that tradition in 2023. They're calling it their reverse advent calendar and they have the list as you're seeing on your screen right now on civiccentertv.com every day of december suggesting a different item that you can donate at spirit of grace church to help people in need in our community throughout this winter and holiday season today they're suggesting children's winter hats over the weekend winter gloves and winter scarves for children there's also some food items on this list as well and, and other necessities that uh, people will need throughout the holiday season and just need in general. And so you donate those items, you bring them over to Spirit of Grace Church located at 2399 Figa Avenue in West Bloomfield. And they will uh, they will then distribute these items out to several different locations and uh, throughout the, the community, including a distribution at Roosevelt Elementary School for families in need in the, in the greater West Bloomfield area, as well as in their blessing box and their diabetic food pantry, both on site at Spirit of Grace Church. Uh, and for food items, they do suggest low carb and low salt and sugar free options to be donated. Of course, a lot of those food items going to go into their diabetic food pantry for those in, in need of special food items this holiday season. Uh, if you're not able to, to donate these items on these specific dates, they're going to accept them all throughout the month of December. In fact, they'll be accepting these donations for this reverse advent calendar uh, campaign all the way through January 1st of 2024. Diane, a really creative way to go about inspiring donations for people in need in our community and beyond this holiday season from Spirit of Grace Church. Tyler, another great initiative by one by another uh, one of our churches. We have we have been talking about different different initiatives we can help people in need, whether it's through clothing or or giving them some uh, some stuff to wear throughout this cold season, or if it's food and non-perishable items. We keep on talking about it, and this is one other great initiative, except it has a very creative twist. Um, so we are also we thank thank them for uh, creating creative ways to support support uh, people in need and to push people in our community to donate and we know they will because we are generous in this community and we love to help. You can always find more information on Spirit of Grace Church programs, including their Blessings Box and their uh, Diabetic Food Pantry, by visiting their website, spiritofgrace.church, or follow them on Facebook, facebook.com slash spiritofgrace. Their reverse Advent calendar also listed in full with additional details of what they're looking for in each of these donated items and some specifics on what sort of food items they're looking for for those donations. Again, you can find that on their Facebook page in this post on facebook.com slash spirit of grace. We'll take a break on the Splash Live on the other side, supporting those in our communities with developmental disabilities. Shane Bronstein, the CEO of JARC, will talk to Diane Chabon after this break. Stay with us. More of your stories from your hometown on your community media. Coming up next. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Find us on Instagram at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Take a break and tune in to the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Chavon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. There you go. 
Thank you. Thank you. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too, and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to the Splash, live. Welcome back to the Splash Live, Greater West Bloomfield's live daily news and talk show. Your stories from your hometown on your community media, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. This is Diane Shaban alongside Tyler Kieft. So on the Splash Live, we take pride in showcasing the exceptional efforts of different NGOs we have throughout the area that makes that creates a better community for all individuals equally. And today, we are very happy and delighted to spotlight JARC, a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving adults, uh, adults with developmental disabilities in the Metro Detroit area. We have a short video with us here just to explain all about JARC, and then we will move forward to talk to Shane Dell, the CEO of JARC. After 54 years, JARC is still providing high quality events and activities for those we serve. JARC provides support for people to live independently in the housing of their choice, while Medicaid provides for their basic needs. At JARC, basic isn't good enough. So let us share with you a little bit about what we've done this past year. Research shows that for people with developmental disabilities, listening to and playing music can help improve communication interaction, and self-expression. This is why JARC organized events to help those we serve engage in music in different ways. For most of us, the live music experience is easy to take for granted. A traditional concert venue is not always comfortable for people with developmental disabilities. Live music performances are often perceived as too loud and crowded. That's why, with your help, we've been able to bring musical opportunities to the people we serve in an accessible, functional environment. Art is known to be a great tool for anyone to improve self-esteem, mental health, and provide an emotional outlet. For those we serve, art can also be an opportunity for non-traditional communication. For these reasons, JARC provides a variety of art opportunities such as recreational therapy and hobbies and hangouts. Thanks to donor funding, those served by JARC can explore new mediums to fit their individual needs without concern for cost. Studies show that getting out and participating in outdoor activities leads to an increase in confidence, enhanced relationships, and elevated quality of life. For those served by JARC, getting out of the house and into the larger community can provide challenges. JARC ensures that the people we serve can choose where they want to go and get there safely. This carnival was consciously created to ensure that individuals with developmental disabilities are comfortable in an event that would normally be overcrowded, overstimulating, and inaccessible. Through these events and countless others, your trust and investment in JARC truly made a difference in the lives of those we serve. Thank, Thank you. you. Joining us today to shed light on JARC and tell us more about it is C JARC's CEO, Shane Dell Brownstein. Shane Dell, welcome to the Splash Life. We're very glad to have you here with us. Glad to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. Shane Dell, can you tell us a little bit more about JARC's mission? Absolutely. So JARC's mission is to help adults with developmental disabilities live the fullest and most productive lives possible. Perfect, Chandel. Well, again, thank you for joining us here. Chandel, can you tell us about the various programs that you joined? We did watch a short video uh, uh, in, uh, earlier in this show about the drug, but I would like to—I would like for you to tell us a little bit more about the various programs that you provide a drug and how does it help your mission? Right. So, you know, part of what we do, and I think that video really spoke to it, is make sure that 
Adults with cognitive impairments and developmental disabilities have their basic needs attended to. Safe housing, um, clothing, food, getting back and forth to medical appointments. Again, many things that we all take for granted in regards to making sure that we stay safe and healthy. But we often tell people, right, a life that's basic is not much of a life at all. And we want to provide beyond that. We always say 80% of our funding uh, comes via the state of Michigan, again, to pay for these critical basic needs. But an 80% life isn't the life that we want. So that 20% is where we provide opportunities for social engagements, for activities, a chance to learn a new skill, to learn to paint, to learn to dance. We offered a class this summer on show tunes, musical theater, screen painting, and really, again, those opportunities that create meaning in our lives. Beyond that, we make sure that all of the people that we serve are able to celebrate the holidays that they want to and to do so with that festive holiday meal with Thanksgiving just recently, a full Thanksgiving dinner was served in each of our homes so that even those people who couldn't be with their biological family were able to celebrate in style with their jerk family. That's absolutely beautiful. Now, Shandell, we all know that uh, all NGOs need uh, volunteers and need people to help them. Can you tell us a little bit more about your volunteering opportunities? Yes. So volunteering opportunities at JARC can vary from coming into the office to help us with clerical tasks and mailings and answering telephones to delivering supplies and food to the folks who live in our JARC homes to working directly with our person served one-on-one -on -one as a mentor, attending our activities, helping at registration, or even we have lots of volunteers who design programs for our folks. We have a, a lovely volunteer who hosts a monthly uh, story hour for all of the people served by JARC. We have another volunteer who hosts a monthly concert. So really it's, Anything that someone might want to do that speaks to something that resonates with them. We always say there is room for everyone at our table. So bring yourself and your interests and we know that we have something that will work for you. Of course, for anybody interested in volunteering or supporting JARC, they can visit www.garc.org or call their phone number on 248-940-2617. Shandell, can you tell us about your upcoming initiative or plans and events that helps with fundraising for JARC? Absolutely. So we actually just came off of our two events. So our fundraising event was just this past October. We had a Studio 54 themed uh, party to celebrate 54 years. And then, as you saw in the video, this past August, we hosted Carnival. And Carnival is something that we're incredibly proud of. Um, obviously, we need uh, donor dollars to pay for the event and sponsors. But the event itself was open to anyone and anyone be it a family with a, a child with a developmental disability, or again, an adult, whether served by JARC or served by another organization, was invited to Carnival for free. And we've all gone to things like the State Fair, Cedar Point, and they're great and they're fun, the midway rides. But you can imagine if you're in a wheelchair, you can't pull up to the games at the midway. They're not accessible to you. If you have, uh, sensory challenges, it's too loud, um, it's too noisy, there's too many people. So to have a sensory friendly accessible event where a whole family could come and celebrate and adults with special needs and developmental disabilities could come and just have a good time is huge for us. So both of those events are in the planning process for next year. We don't have dates yet 
But again, Carnival will happen this summer. We had almost 600 people attend Carnival last year and have popcorn and cotton candy and ride all of the rides that they wanted to and play games and, and win prizes, work with a DJ. And we will have that again this summer and this fall. We will, of course, so important to us that we'd be able to raise funds for these really, really special types of events that make such a huge difference in the lives of the people that we serve and, and really lots of folks in the Metro Detroit community. So we hope to be publishing dates for both of those soon. Of course, for anybody, again, interested in helping out with these events or fundraising or volunteering for these events, you can visit GARC.org or call their number 248-940-2617 or email them at GARC at GARC.org. Shandell, your final words on uh, your future vision of what, what you want to do in the future with GARC and how we would like to help people. Right, so again, we wanna make sure that we continue to provide not just the opportunities of today, but more and more opportunities. JARC has been around going in our 55th year, and we're really proud that as a society, we've evolved so much in the opportunities for the population that we serve, but we're looking to do more. We're looking to gain, again, more opportunity and to continue to provide more and more robust programming so that we really provide every single chance for a person with a developmental disability to reach their fullest potential and to do so in a way that's meaningful to them. Of course, Shandell. Again, thank you so much for all that you do. Uh, for anybody who would like to know more about uh, JARC and about their events, you can also follow their Facebook page, facebook.com slash GARC Detroit. Shandell, thank you so much for joining us today on the Splash Live. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. We'll, be, we'll take a quick break on the Splash Live and we'll be right back. Stay tuned with us. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too, and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. One in four Michigan homes has high levels of radon, a naturally occurring radioactive gas known to cause lung cancer. It doesn't matter where you live or what type of home you have. You won't even know it's there unless you test. So don't wait. Testing is cheap and easy. And if there's a problem, it's simple to fix. Visit michigan.gov slash radon to learn more. We took action, will you? Take a break and tune in to the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Chavon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to the Splash, live. Welcome back to the Splash Live, Greater West Bloomfield's live daily news and talk show. Your stories from your hometown on your community media five days a week on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm Tyler Keeft alongside Diane Chabon. We also thank you for joining us and following along with us on our Facebook page at Civic Center TV 15 and on YouTube at Civic Center TV. While you're on both of those outlets, give us a like, give us a follow, and on YouTube, subscribe and hit that bell for notifications every time that we go live and every time that we post a video, get those in your feed each and every day across social media. And you can find us on all of our socials by visiting Civic Center TV. 
Com. Some social media related stuff that's coming for coming forth in Sylvan Lake. Holiday lighting season is back, so plenty of more posts coming up about the exciting lights all throughout the prettiest little city in the state of Michigan. And they have a competition coming along with it as well. Holiday light judging will happen in a couple weeks, Sunday, December 17th, all across the city of Sylvan Lake in a number of different categories. So they'll be judging, of course, best lights overall, but then also best multicolored lights, best white lights, the most artistic design, the best lit tree, the best neighborhood in Sylvan Lake. You can join as a collective with your neighbors and put together the best neighborhood light display in the prettiest little city. Best Christmas scene, uh, living Christmas card, and uh, best religious lightings uh, as well. All the categories for judging at this year's holiday lighting in Sylvan Lake. So here's how you get involved. One, you can just uh, put up your lights in in. Uh, in your yard and join in on getting either a group together or individual or uh, becoming a judge yourself by sending an email to cityhall at sylvanlake.org and they'll get you uh, in contact with Sylvan Lakes Park Parks and Recreation. You can also call City Hall Monday through Thursday during their regular hours at 248-682-1440. 248-682-1440. Four zero. All this information also available on their website on sylvanlake.org uh, as uh, Diane to get into the holiday spirit, but also put a little bit of friendly competition out there each and every year. This is a fan favorite in Sylvan Lake. Tyler, this is amazing. They're transforming the prettiest little city in Michigan to the prettiest little city, and it's going to be uh, the prettiest magical Christmas city, excuse me, in Michigan, and it's going to look so beautiful. I mean, it's already beautiful, and it's going to be nice to drive through these neighborhoods with all these beautiful lighting and artistic lighting as well. So uh, a great way to get into some nice friendly competition and get into the holiday season and just uh, enjoy the Christmas the truly Christmas spirit. Yeah, December 17th is when the, the lights will be judged. So you got plenty of time to put together your designs, join a group of people in your neighborhood for the neighborhood competition, and, and really put your creativity on display this holiday season. Again, more information on Sylvan Lake. Dot org. Across our four communities, plenty of opportunities to get involved, whether it's in parks and recreation or uh, in other committees and, and volunteer opportunities. There's also another, another way to get involved. That's by joining some of your local boards and commission. West Bloomfield Township looking for uh, looking to fill positions on many of its boards, including the Zoning Board of Appeals, the deadline uh, for, for, for that uh, having already passed, but uh, plenty of other opportunities are still available for the Board of Review, the Construction Board of Appeals, the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission, joining our team, overseeing us here each and every day, and plenty of other opportunities. You can learn more by visiting wbtownship.org or calling the West Bloomfield Township Clerk's Office at 248 Four five one four eight four eight and Diane, this is a great opportunity for people to get involved in the inner workings of their communities and have a say in the future and the present of West Bloomfield Township. Of course, Tyler, it is definitely a great opportunity for people to join in and to uh, to oversee the processes of what makes this community a better place. And there's no better place than working in the West Bloomfield Township to do so. Uh, Tyler, also for people who are looking to add up to their resume and just to j join in. So it's a great, again, it's a great opportunity for people who are interested in being an active member of their community. It is a great resume builder, Diana, as you said. And one of our local commissioners from Parks and Rec actually uh, had that as one of his accomplishments last year when he was named as one of four West Bloomfield residents on Oakland County's 40 under 40. That, of course, being Vincent Kirkwood, three other residents having been named to the 2023 40 under 40. And submissions are now open in uh, Greater West Bloomfield and across Oakland County for 2024's 40 under 40 competitions. This is all part of the county's vision of all ways moving forward. They, they want to recognize people who are doing exceptional things in the business community, are providing an essential service to their community, creating uh, innovation in, in our local area, and of course high achievement in their professional field or across professions in Oakland County. The application period has already begun. It closes very, uh, very soon. Tuesday, December 12th, one week from this upcoming Tuesday, is the end of that deadline at 11.59. PM. So here's what you can do. If you want to submit uh, for the Oakland County 40 under 40, you want to nominate someone, maybe even put yourself in the ring for this year's competition, just visit oakgov.com slash 40 under 40. That's the number 40 
the word under and the number 40 again to learn more information about Oakland County's 40 under 40 oakgov.com slash 40 under 40 for that they have uh, information on the applications what they're looking for uh, more information on uh, on the program going back and you can even learn more about some of the 2023 recipients of, of the of recognition under in the 40 under 40 competition to learn even more about what they're, they're looking for in their perfect candidates so again applications began in mid-November they will end uh, in mid-December December 12th at 1159 p.m. applications close and then we'll have an announcement for you on the 40 under 40 coming in February of 2024 again more information can be found on oakgov.com slash 40 under 40 as we recognize so many people accomplishing great things right here in Oakland County and Diane last year we had a great turnout from here in the greater West Bloomfield area four residents from West Bloomfield Township named to that group of course, and we were very proud of them. They were doing so great in different fields, whether it was Vincent Kirkwood, who was doing a lot of stuff. We did have Vincent Kirkwood right here on the Splash Live, and you can watch his interview on Civic Center TV. And he talked about how much this recognition meant to him and how much it, uh, how much he he truly deserved it because he's been doing a lot of change and he into making this community a better place and we hope that we see more and more greater west bloomfield uh, community members and individuals from our four, four great communities uh, join the 40 under 40 gets recognized because we know that there are there are a lot of individuals uh, doing a lot of great things throughout our community and beyond so uh, a great opportunity to showcase what they are what they're all made of and we will be very proud of them and we will announce them of course on the splash live and we, will, we are hoping to also invite them right here to talk all about it in this coming year yeah, excited to see the 2024 class in February. But first, we got to get those submissions in and get people from our four communities nominated. OakGov.com slash 40 under 40 for more information. So we talk about business professionals in our community making a big impact. We're also hoping as a collective community to make a big impact on our local veterans. A resource fair is on its way in Oakland County coming up on December 14th from 9 o'clock a.m. until 12 noon at the Novi Civic Center, supported by Oakland County Executive David Coulter's office. Oakland County Veterans Services will be on site to answer questions and provide information on a number of services provided in Oakland County and in partnership with the county. This will include representatives from Oakland County Michigan Works, Oakland County Veterans Services, the VA's, the VA's Su Suicide Prevention uh, organization, the Michigan Veterans Affairs Organization, plus other resources such as the Gary Bernstein Community Clinic, which provides free health care services, including dental services to those that are either underinsured or uninsured in our communities and across the local area. You can find more information by visiting oakgov.com or by visiting their Facebook page at oakgov. Plenty more of your stories from your hometown on your community media each and every week, Monday through Friday on The Splash Live. Go to civiccentertv.com to follow along and stay with us right here. The Splash Live will continue very soon.